Hello, people. You're welcome to Pro Masterclass. My name is Tola T A Alabi, and in today's class, I'm going to be talking about why it's hard to be a thinker in Nigeria. Why it's hard to be a thinker in Nigeria. Um, some weeks ago, I did a podcast on minds, merchants, and magicians. And again, I would advise you to listen to that podcast um, if you really want to get good context to what I'm about to talk about here. Um, I categorized personalities into three three main categories. You're either a mind, someone who thinks a lot, um, a merchant, someone who enjoys selling, or a magician, someone with a special skill that attracts people, um, that draws people to them. So you're either one of these three things. So in today's class, I'm going to be talking about why I think it's hard to be a thinker or a mind in a country like my country, Nigeria. And um, this this class was inspired by a message I got from one of my podcast listeners um, called Sheifumi. And Sheifumi said he had been listening to my podcast and he found it very helpful. And he, he, he sent me a question and he said, I used to be a designer in 2022. I stopped because I started liking brand strategy. I enjoy brand strategy now, though I haven't worked on a project that pays. I've only been trying out what I learned with friends for business, um, with friends with businesses. Um, the space outside, that is the Nigerian space, seems to be looking for more designers than strategists. Do you think I should pick up brand identity design again and use it as an entry into brand strategy? So this is a good question. And I decided to answer this question on the podcast because I realize it, it's a very important thing um, for, for you to prepare yourself for if you are in mind in a country like Nigeria. And when I um, say a country like Nigeria, what, what, I, what, what I'm trying to say uh, is we must understand that there are three economic concepts behind every location. Any location you find yourself in terms of country, um, you must, th th there's an economic concept that, that guides that place. And there are three broad economic concepts. And they are developed countries, developing countries, and underdeveloped countries. Those are the three broad economic concepts for every geographical location. You're either in a developed country, a developing country, or an underdeveloped country. And that's very important for you to keep in mind. So you must... You must know where you are, study where you are. And I'll tell you how you can know where you are, how to rate where you are. Now, a developed country is a country that produces most of what it consumes. A developed country, let's just, I'm not going to put it, but it, it, it might be much, much deeper than that, but I'm going to make it like idiot proof right now. Definition is a country that produces most of what it consumes. So what they eat, what they wear, you understand, what they use is, is produced right there in that country. That's a developed country, you understand. So they, 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 they produce what they consume. Now, a developing country is a country that has started, it's on the journey, it has started to produce what it consumes. So it, it might not be producing a lot of it, uh, but maybe about 40%, sometimes up to 50%, they produce what they consume. You understand? They produce what they consume. So most of what you you use in that country, you see that most of it is made in that country, sourced in that country, manufactured in that country. That's a developing country. A developing country is one that has, you know, some, they, 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 they've caught on to the concept of, of um, producing what they consume. And um, an underdeveloped country 
is a country that consumes way more than what it produces. Way more. If at all, way more. You understand? Way more than what it produces. So there are three types of economic concepts that we have that guide every geographic location. So think of where you are and, um, you know, um, take a census of what, whether, you know, look at products around you and see where they are made, where they source for the raw material, where the factories are, you understand? And then you would, you'll be able to judge accurately whether you're living in a developed country, a developing country, or an underdeveloped country. Now, in Nigeria, I, I would say Nigeria is an underdeveloped country to a large extent. We consume way more than what we produce. A lot of what we consume in Nigeria is produced elsewhere. Elsewhere, the factory is somewhere else. So even when you see people producing stuff, it's produced elsewhere and they stamp Nigeria on it, they don't source for it. So you realize that if the borders were to close on Nigeria, if they have economic sanctions, Nigeria will suffer a lot. Economic sanctions would really affect us. It would take us to our knees because we consume more than what we produce. That's, th- that's what Nigeria is. It's a developing country. It is not... Uh, it's, it's an underdeveloped country. It's not a developing country or a developed country. We we, we produce way more than what we con we consume way more than what we produce. So we de- so we depend so much on other countries to survive, and that's why sanctions are terrible for underdeveloped countries. Um, for developed countries, sanctions do not work so well, and that's why you realize during the um, Russia Ukraine war. They try to put sanctions on on Russia, but it's 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 hardly denting them. You understand? It's hardly denting them. Put sanctions on China, it would hardly dent them. You understand? Put sanctions on the United Kingdom or the United States, it's not going to dent them that much. You understand? They are going to survive that. They are going to they are going to come. You you have to come way harder than putting sanctions. But sanctions on Nigeria would would bring us to our knees. Um, so you have developing countries, um, and these are countries, a lot of Asian countries are developing countries. A lot of them have even, even begun to cross that threshold and become developed countries. So you, you have countries like Malaysia, which were developing countries, but I can tell you they are developed countries now. Um, Singapore, you understand, those countries, Indonesia, um, they are beginning to cross that because they are beginning to produce what they consume. So, this is very important for us to keep in mind. Why it's hard for a thinker to thrive in an underdeveloped country like Nigeria. Why it's hard? Now, it's hard because the production process is broken into three stages. Three broad stages. The production process starts with conceptualization and then we move into manufacturing and then it ends with sales and distribution. So the production process, if you are going to simplify it, three broad stages, starts with conceptualization, moves into manufacturing and then sales and distribution. Everything, every product you see starts out that way. It starts with conceptualization, thinking. It starts with um, manufacture, production itself, um, and then sales and distribution. How they get it in the hands of the consumers. Now, the problem with third world countries or underdeveloped countries is that they are so concerned with the last stage of production which is sales and distribution their biggest concern is how to get the product a lot of underdeveloped countries have no idea how products are made it's not important how it's made not important 
there was a pro- there was a program on uh, on TV for a while called How It's Made. It was on Discovery TV, and this show you how things are made, how things are made, and stuff like that. You see, a lot of it mm, when you watch it in third world countries, you are shocked. You understand? We have no idea how things are made, how conflicts is made. We don't know. You understand? How simple things, how toothpicks are made, we don't know. We are mostly interested in how it's distributed to us and how many units we can purchase. Now, when that's the mentality in a place and someone like Shei Fumi wants to go into brand strategy, which is about thinking as opposed to designing, designing a flyer, designing a logo, designing a website, which is more about the artifact. It's going to be very hard because the society you are living in, thinking is very abstract. Remember, we are not involved in the conceptualization. The conceptualization doesn't make much sense to us. So we do not value thinking. We do not even know that things start with thinking. And that's why when you're trying to do brand strategy and you're trying to charge someone for brand strategy, they're like, "Um, so what do I get at the end of the day? They are more concerned with what they touch, what they eat, what they can feel. If it cannot be touched, tasted, smelled, in a developed, in underdeveloped country, it wouldn't fly. In fact, the underdeveloped country would, would expect you to give it out for free. Absolutely free. Because for them, no work has been done. In an underdeveloped country, the standard or the measure of work is the tangible. They believe what goes on in your head should be for free. So if you're talking and you're advising, so if your work is advisory, you're going to have a tough time selling that in an underdeveloped country like Nigeria. Because people are all about what they can see, what they can hold, what they can touch, what they can feel. So for Shei Fumi that is asking, um, should he go back to design and deal with the tangible as an entry into um, into brand strategy. I, w- I, w- I would say that might be the wisest thing to do. Um, I really pray that we, we move from that. And, 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 I, and I think we would, you understand? I think we would um, because, because we're getting more exposed and um, the economy is getting harder and so we are not there's already an embargo, an internal embargo. There's already an internal sanction based on um, the, 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 the failing of our currencies and stuff like that. We are already beginning to think of producing ourselves. So what I see in a, in a short time is a country that will be forced to start to get on that road to being a developing country. We are going to be forced to. Um, by looking inwards. Um, So it's going to get that level where people are going to to, um, treasure and begin to um, accept that conceptualization is the the beginning of creation. And then the thinker can easily charge for thinking and consulting and advising. Um, But for now, we are not there yet. You understand? We are still struggling with with that um, sales and distribution and how we'll get our hands on already finished products. Um, so brand strategy would always be a hard sell. Um, I believe brand strategy, for now, if you are a thinker, you, where, where, what, what, a lot of what you're doing advisory and um, you know a lot of thinking and maybe just guiding people, um, what, what the final thing is not tangible. You might want to have something tangible to start with. You might want to. And for a lot of people that know my story, they know I, I, I worked as a designer for many years, um, designing flyers, logos, and, and, and I really specialized in designing logos. But you know, for a thinker, the more you spend time doing an artifact, the more, the more frustrating it is because you, you want to be free to think. You understand? You want to be free to think. Um, so a thinker is not someone that wants to spend a lot of time um, doing stuff 
We want to think, we want to observe, we want to write what we've observed, we want to ruminate on it, we want to spread our thoughts. That's what we want to do. For me, what I really want to do is to be able to do this podcast all day, every day. But it's a hard sell. It's a hard sell to do that in Nigeria. It's a hard sell to get patrons to patronize you doing that. Just abroad, you can have that. If in the US you can make a podcast as a living and you have patrons that donate every single day for you to continue teaching them. In Nigeria, it's very hard. They just tell you, go out and get a real job. That's what thinkers feel, get a lot in Nigeria. Go out and get a real job. Because for them, it does, doesn't, doesn't exist. Conceptualization doesn't exist. It's, it's free. Conceptualization is free. Let's talk about tangible stuff. And so you might need to ease into your thinking life by just having a product. And that's why for me, I have a product where I I, I have um, a, a design academy where I teach people how to create logos. And, you know, then they can see that. They can see what I show them as evidence of work. You understand? So, so I have to show them my previous logos, what I've done before for actually existing companies. So they see it. It's tangible. They're excited by it. But if you were to, to say you want to be sharing your thoughts, very, 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 very hard. To thrive on that if you want to, if you want to do brand strategy for people and and don't get me wrong people do do brand strategy in nigeria a lot of them get not a lot of them but quite a number of them get well paid for it but then they are few and far between a lot of them get well paid for it because they've built relationships with people working in highbrow places so if you have somebody who went to school with um someone that Let's say I went to school with Dangote, for example. Dangote is the richest man in in Africa. Um, I went to school with him. I was his classmate. And now he has his factories and everything. And he knows me as someone that has great thoughts. He's going to pay me, you understand? Because we built a relationship over years. Um, I went to school with someone that um, started a bank. He's going to pay me for strategy. But then, you know, if you're starting out as a young person... Getting people to pay you a premium for your thoughts, no matter how quality they are, would always be a hard sell in an underdeveloped country. It's going to be more than I have good thoughts. It's going to be people will do it for you out of, I know this guy is my guy. You understand? Let's bring him to the table too. You understand that kind of thing? That, that, that can help. You understand? Um, so for the thinker, I would just say what, what you might need to do is have something that sustains you in a developing country that you can sell, that people can touch. <laughs> you can sell and people can touch. If you're a thinker and you have that, you, are, you, you, you have greater chances of sustenance um, than just having this, this, um, this ideology that I'm a brand strategist. And that's all I'm going to do, you know, um, coming out of school. It might be very hard for you to sell that just coming out of coming out of school. And that's the first thing you're doing. You, know, you might face a lot of opposition. A lot of people might prize you down. A lot of people might feel that you need to do it for free. Um, but I believe that the world will change. The world will change. Um, things will improve. I, I, I honestly believe that. Um, you know... The other day I was talking with my wife and I was saying, even this was something that um, um, someone like um, Da Vinci went through. Um, Leonardo Da Vinci went through this. Um, he was a thinker. He was a mind. He was a great mind. But then he was living in a century where um, a lot of people started putting value on products. So, so they always, they, they tried to, to pigeonhole him to an artist. But Da Vinci was not an artist. In fact, I really feel Da Vinci, if he lived today and people called him an artist, he would feel insulted. He was a thinker. And um, he had the skill of art which came from his keen observation of nature. You understand? So he started to draw going into the field. Remember then, you had to do something for you to survive. You understand? So... Um, he, was a, he was a thinker, but then he had to survive on art. 
And that's why you realize he hardly finished any of his commissions. Because, as I said, for a thinker, um, it's hard for you to sit and do that artifact for so long. You get bored because your mind wants to go somewhere else and think on other subject matters, not to be constrained on a particular art of creating something or chipping at something. So he hardly finished any of his projects. Any of his projects, most of them not completed. So he had conflicts with a lot of his clients. And a lot of people thought he was lazy. Especially his um, competitor, his main competitor of the day then, who was um, um, Michelangelo. And Michelangelo was a magician. He was not in mind. You understand? He was a magician, a great artist. He loved art and sculpting you understand but people compared them but it was if on it was an unfair comparison because they were far from the same they were they were not in the same category one was a magician the other one was a mind but the mind had a hard time expressing himself the magician and that's why it seemed like um michelangelo was 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 more efficient because he was doing what he actually loved so he completed projects he completed sculptures commissions and he always mocked um, da Vinci for being a lazy guy that never followed through, but he wasn't lazy. He just wanted more time to think. And you see that towards the end of um, Da Vinci's life, someone understood him. Um, I've forgotten who, who, who it was, but it was one of those monarchies. He, he understood him and he told him, come and live with me and I would pay for all your living expenses and all you just need to do is just think think and come up with theories and write and just just be yourself and it is it's recorded that that was one of the that was one of the best that was the best phase of da vinci's life that was the happiest he ever was just somebody being a patron to him being a thinker so you can see how hard it was for him that early period um but now um the, the western world has developed and i and i do believe that Africa will develop. There are countries in Africa that are developing, becoming uh, more developing countries, um, like Rwanda, becoming developing country. You know, they're trying. They're trying more to produce um, what they consume. I believe it will happen in Nigeria eventually. But for for Sheifumi, who is asking me this question, I would I would say, have a design aspect of your services that allow you to deal with the tangible, so that you can. Um, um, Make some income, you understand. Make some income, um, but then do not compromise it altogether. Remember, someone has to bail the cat. Somebody has to bail the cat, and that means some people have to do thinking, and do it more and more for the society to realize that thinking is a thing. So don't give it up. Don't don't give up thinking, but just have something you do by the side, like I do now. I do a lot of thinking. I do a lot of writing, propagating my thoughts. I get to record, record my podcast, even though it takes a lot of my time, and I still have to get to trying to sell the tangible. But I realize with time, it, it will begin to give way to the full expression of who I am. But I realize that I cannot compromise it. If I compromise it, then I will never be a master. And so um, what our advice is for um, Shei Fumi, don't, don't give up on that design end because design does have a thinking end to it. That's why I love design. But then it has to end up in the tangible for people to pay for it. Um, and as people begin to pay for it, for your design, being exceptional design, they will begin to trust you more as a mind. They will begin to trust you more as a mind. And um, I would advise that embrace doing your mind things for free. Don't don't ruggedly hold on to the fact that they must pay you for it or else you won't do it. No, or else nobody will ever know how great a mind you are. So do it. Do it for free as, as long as you can, you understand. And very soon, someone will see that spark and someone will see the value in you thinking as a mind. And then you can fully rest on being a strategist. I hope this, this helps someone out there. I know someone gets full value from it.